All right, guys, so we've had this box for quite some time now, but because of all the tournaments and the traveling, we just didn't have time to review it. Are we still acting like it's the first time we see it and we're so surprised? Yeah, wow, yeah, for sure, for so sure, new. for sure. Right, we are. Let's go, three, okay, two, go. one. Oh my God, wow, Ooh, no so way. Amazing. So Wait, amazing. it's strong? What's up guys and welcome back to Gladiator Tennis and today we're reviewing the new iteration of a racket endorsed by Dino Medvedev, the Technifiber T5305. I know we're a little bit late to the party but anyways, check out the specs. Rish, is everything yeah. good? You've been sitting here yeah. like for five hours or something. Man, it's just that I can't get over this box. Like it's so beautiful and, and so well done. The attention to detail, like look at this Dino Medvedev note over here. I'm sure it's written by him. But yeah, anyways, the, the racket, the T5305, the new one. I like the previous one. This is a good racket and I'm sure I'm gonna like this one. It has a little bit of a weird string pattern, but yeah. otherwise it's control oriented. It's endorsed by Daniel Medvedev. What else do you want, right? Mm -hmm. I'm still going to play test it, don't worry, I'll tell you my final opinion. But in case your expectations are as high as mine and you're already willing to buy it, why not buy it using our link in the description and our discount code? Because this way you save some cash and you help us out a little bit. So while I uh, go play test the racket, maybe check the link out or maybe don't. I don't know, guys, it's, <laughs> it's your decision to make, but I'm going to go play. Please do it. I mean, check it out yourself, Glads. I think I had some footage of the box. Pretty cool, right? I feel like this time I'll start with the things that I don't really like about this frame. So on that note written by Medvedev, it says, I hope it gives you the same confidence it gives to me or something along those lines. Well, it doesn't, though it doesn't in its stock form. The main problem that I kept experiencing with the new T5 is that it seemed like the head of the racket was almost falling behind and not giving me enough weight for the penetration through the ball. Therefore, pretty much all of my concerns come from that. Though this inconvenience can be very easily fixed by adding some weight at 9 and 3 or at 12 and a bit to the handle. Not sure which one would work better just yet though, adding some weight would really improve this thing's performance. Cause otherwise it's a great racket, control oriented, has a very pleasing plush feel, okay on spin and maybe low on power but like it's a control oriented racket, what do you expect? What does all that sum up to? Well, forehands feel controlled and precise. If your timing is good you get to the ball perfectly and hit the ball with the sweet spot, in this case it's an absolute joy. I kept messing up the timing due to that racket's head falling behind kind of thing, so it took me some time to get used to it. I had to make my backswings way longer and lower the speed of the shots. I got the hang of it in the end though. The spin is pretty good for such a control oriented frame. I give credit for that to that string pattern that kind of manages to do everything. Backhand suffered from the head delay more, so much so that I was hitting some balls so out it seemed like I was drunk or something. That's because I play mainly with my body and don't really correct the trajectory of the ball with my wrist, meaning that I was sometimes struggling to bring the head of the racket to the ball at the right time. Adjusted and got used to it in the end, but I really don't like adjusting my backhands that much. Though if you play your backhands with a lot of spin, you might not even notice it. Volleys were alright, I'm not the most talented volleyer and the 98 inch head sometimes messes with me, so I was often missing the sweet spot. However, the balls were going in, so I'm not really complaining. Second top sensors were great for this category of rackets, thanks to the string pattern again. While the flats and slices were ending up way out way too often, for the same reason as all the other shots. Returning was good though, cause here I was going for a different strategy and going to the other extreme, making my back swings very short and therefore the ghosting swing weight wasn't as noticeable. Even managed to do a few signature Daniel slash Grisha backhands inside out returns. Love those. Glads, it's a great control oriented but versatile racket. If you're considering it, give it a try. And if you're feeling like experimenting with uh, lead and adding weight to the racket, definitely check it out. And I mean, the design is quite alright. Nothing special, but you know, pretty solid.
Mm. Mm. You felt that too, right? Somebody yeah. hit the subscribe button and we got mm. And if you still haven't done it, please subscribe, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications when we upload a new video, all right? And plus, you can follow us on Instagram. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Arik didn't forget to mention Instagram. <laughs> This well, is the same thing. This is a historical day. moment. Yeah. And by the way, guys, in case you didn't know, uh, so this is our Gladiators tennis account, but then we also have our private accounts. So if you want to follow that, feel free to do so. Yeah. And you can see some models separately. Separately. Aregi <laughs> Gius. Yep. You have one attempt to record this transition. Vale. No problem. Never a problem. <laughs> I mean, this is Medvedev's racket. Medvedev is, uh, for me, on his way to become my idol he's on like on the idolization excuse me Federer just retired and you're already thinking of cheating on him don't put me in that situation yeah. I like Medvedev that's what I'm saying and plus I like the racket the design so hopefully it's good to play too and I hopefully I don't have to do his techniques you know, <laughs> to, to play good with it so yeah let's see the box of the new Technifiber T5 305 costs more than the frame itself, I'm sure. But uh, the racket is still not bad, so let's talk about it. With that beautiful white special textured finish, this French baby caught my eye. What also caught my attention was how easy it is to control the ball from the baseline even though it was lacking something on the baseline. We'll talk about that later. During the impact, I was getting a lot of feedback from the ball, which allowed me to go for more risky and improvised, aka senseless but more satisfying shots. Especially on the approach shots, where I don't exactly feel very confident every day, but today with this tea fight, something was different. As mentioned before, there's something that bothered me on the baseline. You see, the new Technifiber makes you give all you got in every form forehand or backhand. Due to the lack of power, once you're tired and you start generating less power with your arm, a lot of the balls fall into the net. I felt like Popeye the sailor after losing his spinach power. But if you're aware of that demandingness of this frame, then by applying more power you can still produce some quality baseline shots. On the return it was decent enough to block the ball, so it gave me the opportunity to get into the rally and start creating some magic from there on. Going up to the net, I didn't feel like the sweet spot was immense, but I'm sure that our viewers talent is immense, so you guys won't have any problem volleying because even though it's not the best to volley it's still not bad serving was great surprisingly i was getting enough power to deliver good first serves but at the same time i wasn't stressing out because of my first serve percentage as i had enough control to put the ball exactly in the corner that i wanted so people with powerful shots that want a control oriented racket i think your prayers have been heard thanks for watching let's see the greats